You know, I love G37 owners, but you guys are crazy. Guys, hit that intro. Come everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion guys and today I am still in search for a second car for the channel which will be a G37 Coupe. Now if you guys are new to this channel I am an Nissan Infinity enthusiast. First, The main car of the channel uh, is uh, my Q50 and the second car that I'm looking to purchase is a G37 uh, Coupe for the channel. But anyways. I want to pick at my VQ brother's head. I'm not talking about my Q50, guys. I am talking about the G37 owners, you Coop and Sedan guys. You guys are charging way too much for your G37s. Now, this is specific towards the region that you're in. Let me explain. I am based out of New York City, so the prices of G37 Coops are a lot higher than compared to other parts of America. I don't know why, but it's just, maybe they're just hotcakes up here and people are willing to pay more. Now, the market I'm necessarily talking about too, to get more spe uh, specific, is private sellers. I'm looking to purchase it from someone who's an owner. I am looking into possibly getting it from a dealer because I really don't have to come out of pocket for it, but I'm still like, you know what, let me just look for someone who's like regularly just selling it because I don't feel like taking out a loan or anything like that, or just even buying it because I don't, might not want to pay that much taxes if you know what I mean. But anyways, you guys are charging a lot of money for your G37. I'm gonna show you some examples in this video. So just watch, watch the video. You might actually love some of the commentary. You actually might sit there and say, yo, this guy is freaking crazy. Not me, but the person posting it up. So the number one is, one thing I see the most, I see most happening is, you guys think that modifications bring up the price of the car by at least a 20 to 30%. No, that is not a thing. In the market, if you if your car is five thousand dollars and you spend two thousand dollars on wheels, right, with and tires, you spend another three thousand dollars on aesthetics and other bolt-on modifications and labor. It does not make your car a ten thousand dollar car. That's it. That is it. If you want to get the if you want to get some of the money back for your modifications, demod the car. Put it back to stock and then sell it. That's the only way you can nickel and dime your way back. Because you know how I know this? I've been through this before. I've seen plenty of people go through this before. You're not going to get all your money that you want back. Now, if your car is tastefully modified, yes, there is a buyer always out there. If they want specifically what you want. But the majority of buyers are not looking to buy a car that's already modified. And if it is modified, they don't want to pay an overly inflated price for it. Okay? Um, number two. You guys are charging too much for a car we know that has an issue. Now, let me explain. We all know that the early VQs, um, V237s, have a gallery gasket issue. Pretty much, this is an oiling issue where you will lose oil pressure and your motor can go boom. This is when you're really racing it and everything like that. But over time, this is a known issue in the VQ realm. So, it's just like, you know those um, M3s that have the rod bearing issues? When you when you purchase that car, you know that you're gonna have to set aside another five to ten k to get that stuff replaced, and it's the same thing here. So if you spend ten thousand dollars on a G37, no, unless you just baby that car and really don't do nothing uh, with it. But even me, I'm gonna beat on the car, so I already know what I'm getting into. You don't want to put set aside another three to four grand to, to replace a gallery gasket. No, no one wants to do that. So. Uh, I believe a lot of G37 owners don't take that account. I understand the market is dictating what it dictates, but I get it. Number three, some of you guys are going above and beyond even what Kelly Blue Book is saying. You're like, oh, well, Kelly Blue Book says between seven and nine. Let me price it at 11 so I can get a low baller for nine. No, that's not the way it works, bro. That's not the way it works. I'd rather buy a $10,000 car from the dealer. At least it'll come with some kind of 30 to 90 day warranty for any issues necessarily, rather than buy it from just some regular Joe Schmo selling his G37 for 10 Gs, 2008 because it has drop springs and wheels. But anyway, guys, let me stop ranting. Let me show you guys some, some examples. All right, guys, so let's start off with this 2008 G37. 
and it has about 50 something thousand miles on it guess how much they won boom sixteen thousand dollars for their modded g37 with low miles around 50k they have the car sitting on rahana wheels you can see that they have hand cooked tires they have coilovers they have a well, I don't even know what catback or seems like a regular old DIY catback exhaust and other light modifications that don't reflect the price of the car. It doesn't make any sense. Then they wanted to include the cosmetic changes they made from the side skirts matched to the car and they had their headlights done. So this car is necessarily completely stuck, guys. Oh, coilovers and wheels and side skirts does not mean that this car is a fifteen to sixteen thousand dollar car yes the mileage is low i give him that but that's the only thing that makes this car that more appealing but it's still an early model vq37 and it will have this issue now i know that i'm picking on the prices of these people's cars but hear me out there's also a dealer equivalent so that means that he wants about 15 to 16 grand for this car but you can go to a dealer get one that's stock with probably 2012 2013 with the same trim a lot less miles for the same price and have the security of buying from a dealership rather than just buying from an owner that inflated the price because of parts now understand in this video there will be cars that i'm talking about their price their prices but there will always be a dealer equivalent what i'm trying to say is that private sellers sellers usually are cheaper than the dealers and i'm finding out that they're either marking their price at the same amount as the, as the dealers charge or even higher so guys let's move forward to the second example and that brings us to number two a 2010 g37 with right around 125 thousand miles now he wants 10.5 for it which i think is a fair price because it is about two years newer so that makes sense the market is going to dictate it to be a little bit more expensive but even with the little Kelly Blue Books um, excerpt there, this car is supposed to range right around between 7 and 10.5. He put it more on the high end. Okay, that's fine. If someone talks him down, someone talks him down. But guys, remember, the 2008 to like 2012, 2013, is, it's all the same car. They're pretty much the same trim, but the gallery gasket issue is still here. And I'm like, this is a $10,000 car that he, want, he wants to get $10,000 for this with a higher mileage, 127 thousand miles higher mileage, and you will still run into a gallery gas issue. So this one is still turning me off. I understand I'm trying to get so much for a cheap price because the market is dictating this, but guys, you can't get mad at me for just being upset. Like no one wants to spend 10 Gs on a stock car. That's not a, you know, it's not like it's an M3, it's, it's G37, come on. But anyways, let's talk some more. Well, you guys are gonna say I'm still being cheap. All right, I'm trying to be boost on the budget, but hear me out, guys. He's char he's selling this car for right around the going price of what a dealership would charge you. Remember, private sellers usually try to charge a cheaper price. And even with his own specific year, Kelly Blue Books is ranging this car between 7,500 to 10 to 10k. Usually, when it's on the higher end of that spectrum, the mileage is super low. I don't mean 20, 30,000 miles, but it's usually super low. Yes, 120,000 miles is a lot. But if you divide that between the last 10 years, um, that's right around what 10, uh, what was that? About 10, 10, 12 a year or 10 to whatever it is, right over 10,000 miles a year. And that's actually not bad for a car. That's actually regular daily commuting. But once again, the price is still not reflecting the private sale of it. So that's why I'm still not interested in this one. So let's go and see if I can find something a more, bit more affordable that um, I may consider or that you may, guys may sit there and say, okay, that's not bad. Let's go. Now that brings us to this 2008 G37. And there's already a kicker here. It's an automatic. Now I'm not saying that they aren't uh, manuals out there, but I'll take a seven speed automatic. But moving forward, the car does have some small modifications, but the mileage is super high at right around 160,000 miles. Now he does actually have um, small little um, up, up, upgrades that I do like, such as uh, the stance of the car, small little aesthetic mods. But for the price, this car is priced around $7,500. And here's the thing, it's not in New York City. It's in Georgia. Yes, this guy's actually in a, low, a lot lower state. And it's very hard to find cars in decent condition like this in the higher states, or at least even with higher mileage, at least that the mileage reflects, uh, the, the price reflects the mileage of the car and the use. So I don't know guys, I don't know, but let me just close it out with you guys real quick. And let me give you guys my final thoughts. All right, guys, so let's talk about it a little bit. 
Um, number one, let's just be honest. I'm not going to be able to get this G37 coupe for five grand. Some of you guys have sent me links at my Boost Emotion IG and Facebook and Boost Emotion Gmail.com from what you have found in your area. But I don't want to commute very far or try to go very far just to, to save a thousand dollars. Um, possibly save a thousand dollars. I'm still have to spend money on travel tickets and stuff like that. So I'd rather not do, deal with that. Now, um, within my area, 5K is not a thing. Those cars are going to fly off the shelf. And if they are 5K, they're usually not sports. They're beat up. They're journeys. They have cream leather interior, which I'm not really a fan of. It has a color I don't like. It's, it's never going to be a car that's clean. I like to buy clean used cars. To me, I think these cars with high mileage should be no more than 5K if they're 2008. But sports, I get it. It'll be a little bit more uh, expensive. But I'd rather get the sport because at the end of the day I don't want to end up having to change the bumper to a sport bumper or an IPL bumper or change out the interior at the end of the day I'm gonna end up spending extra money for what yes I do want the VQ but I don't I also do want the sport version I it, it's okay I'd rather not spend the extra money even though with my Q50 I, I bought my calipers and rotors for $500 I just don't feel like doing that with this car this car I actually don't mind buying it slightly modified that's why you see i'm posting up ones that are slightly modified because i'm okay with that if it's going to be tastefully modded with with modifications that i know i'm going to do such as coilovers um other suspension components aesthetic looks uh maybe some intakes a uh, manifold some little stuff like that i'm okay with spending that money because i'd rather not spend it on a seven thousand dollar one and have to buy intakes exhaust test pipes and go through labor I don't feel like going through that because I know with this car I want to buy it as is ride around it the way it is for a little bit and I'm gonna start modifying it so if it comes with some modifications already either I can sell it because I know I want to go boost with it regardless this is boost in motion guys I'm not gonna go get a g37 and keep it stock I thought I was but nah it has to get boosted and I've seen too much high horsepower g37s and I want to be part of that crew too so yes that's why I don't mind spending a little extra money or spending that money if it's reflected on the price for the modified G37 coupe. Now, I do want to find a six-speed manual because at the end of the day, if we're going boost that, we'll make sure the transmission can handle it. But we'll figure out the seven-speed automatic or the five-speed automatic later down the line as that goes on. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, I'm not going to be able to find one at 5K. It looks like I'm going to have to spend a little over 5K and hopefully I can find some, a G37 owner who, who gives a good price that reflects a really good price that me and him or her are okay with. And we can bring that car to the channel. So otherwise than that, guys, tell me what you think. Um, once again, if you live in the New York City area or Northeast area and you come across a good deal, still send it to me at Boost Emotion IG and Facebook and Boost Emotion on gmail.com. Uh, also, if you want to support the channel, because, you know, I'm still budget on motion and boost on the budget. I have a Teespring account below and I'll let you can buy my merch. Um, definitely the money I, the money I make from that goes towards purchasing a second car and doing these modifications because... Without doing these modifications, I can't beat cars and make more content. But yes, I'm just trying my best to just continue to move forward and just progress and just show you guys some of this journey. Because, um, yo, we all got to win and we all want to have fun. And I really want the world to see how good G37s are. I mean, yes, we love 370Zs, but we don't have any real big G37 uh, channels yet. And I would like to be one of them. All right, guys, so if you want to support that, hit the like button, comment below, tell me what you think. If you enjoyed the video, always hit the like button. Watch the videos from start to finish, guys. Start to finish. You guys have a good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you, guys. You have a good day. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost in Motion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.